Okay, so we're gonna continue in our series on moment of inertia. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a beam, right, that we've been given, it's 17 feet long, and we wanna find the moment of inertia about the principal x-axis -x -axis and the maximum bending stress for the given beam and loading. And we're also given the shear and moment diagram for this beam, where we end up with a moment, a maximum moment of 36.125 kip feet that we're gonna use in our bending stress calculation. Really what I wanna focus here on with this video is the moment of inertia and the bending stress. So in this problem, we are gonna start in using the parallel axis theorem. So in a previous video, we just looked at basic rectangular shapes, but here we have two shapes. One has is basically a rectangular, so we can you know take a look at the moment of inertia of a basic rectangle, which is just Ix equals bh cubed over 12. But then we have this shape that's a C10 by 15.3, and this channel here, is a, a standard steel shape. So we're gonna go look up the moment of inertia for that, but what do we do now since we have two different pieces that we have to deal with together? Well, the parallel axis theorem is what we're gonna use to really take a look at that. And, and what this theorem says is the moment of inertia about the principal axis is equal to the sum of the individual moments of inertia of the pieces or the parts plus some, some, some other term here, which is essentially going to account for if this section is not about the center of gravity. So if this section is not about the center of gravity, let's say you know we were to weld another plate on down, down here, right? And if we welded another plate on down, down here, this this section is no longer right in line with the center of gravity. So that's going to change things. Well, in this case, we don't have that, right? So I'll take it out. And what we do have, though, is we have two sections that are symmetric about the principal axis. So the center of gravity of this thing is just gonna be right along this axis, right at the center of these two members. So this term in the parallel axis theorem is gonna go away because all of the moments of inertia, the principal moments of inertia line up with the principal axis here, x, x. So let's get started and go through it. And so first, what I'll do is I'll just finish this, right? I'll finish uh, my formula here for Ix for this rectangle. So the rectangle, what do we have? Well, Ix equals bh cubed over 12. And what do we know? Well, we know that b is a half an inch. That's given up here. We have half an inch. And then our h is 10, so times 10 inches cubed all over 12. And what I get when I do that out is 41.67 inches cubed. Okay, that's cool. And next what we wanna do is we wanna take a look at this channel. And to do that, I'm gonna use make use of uh, AISC Shapes Database. And this is really neat. So if you haven't taken a steel design course, it's okay, you don't need to yet. And probably chances are you haven't taken one yet. But AISC is the American Institute of Steel Construction and they have a database that gives you properties on all these shapes. And fortunately for us, it's free and publicly accessible. So what I can do here is I can pull up the AIC website and in this website, right, AIC.org publications, I'll post the link below. What you have here is under the shapes database, you have the shapes database. You can click on this and just download the Excel sheet. So I've gone ahead and done that. And I'll pull it open here. And when I pull it open, right, this is the shapes database. There's a readme file, disclaimer, and all sorts of other information. But what you'll notice is that in this shapes database, and I'm not gonna go through all of it, but basically you can see that there's uh, any channel that's in the AISC uh, table, you can go find. So I can come to the database, and I've already pulled this one up here. But a channel 10 by 15.3 uh, here, right, it is, has a moment of inertia in Ix about the principal axis, its own center of gravity of 67.3. So I can come back here and just write that in. I didn't have to go calculate it, it's just given, right? This is 67.3 inches to the fourth. Oh, and I made a mistake. Inches cubed, that's incorrect. It's inches to the fourth here. All right, so now we have our two moments of inertia of our two sections about each of their own individual uh, principal axes. So interestingly enough, these both correspond, this is a symmetric section, so they both correspond to the center of gravity of the whole thing. So because of that, we can come here and we can go ahead and find our moment of inertia, uh, right? So what we're doing here is we're just trying to figure out, well, how do we get our bending stress? What do we do? We have our maximum moment. We found C, C, I, I didn't write it out here, but C is just the distance from the, the principal neutral axis to the farthest point. And you'll notice, right, what, I, what we've been talking about, this is gonna be five inches for both the rectangle 
and the channel. It's uh, the same on the top, same on the bottom, but this is gonna be you know, a symmetric section. So C, we found, right, we found our moment, found our C. Now we're gonna come back and find our moment of inertia. So here with our moment of inertia, we're gonna apply this formula, but this 80 squared term goes to zero, again, because this central axis is, is in the center and this section is symmetric, okay? So when we do that, let's write that out, and we get Ix equals well, I naught, they're the sum of I naught plus 80 squared. So I'll just write it out again here. But here what we get is the sum of I naught is just going to be 41.67 inches to the fourth plus 67.3 inches to the fourth. And when we do that out, we get Ix of so this composite section is going to be 108.97. Okay, so we just went through and we found our moment of inertia, 108.97 inches to the fourth. So what we have to do next is just go and find the bending stress. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use that bending stress formula, which is FB equals MC over I, and plug in values that we have. So the moment was 36.125 kip feet. We're gonna multiply that by 12 inches per foot, right, to get our unit conversions because C here is five inches and we want all the units to match, right? And then we're gonna divide by the moment of inertia, which is 108.97 inches to the fourth. When we do that out, we get our bending stress equal to 19.9 kips per square inch. So that's our answer. We've done it, we've solved it, and we're good, all right? We went through, we found the maximum moment, right? We got that from our uh, moment diagram. We found C, which in this case was the distance from the principal axis all the way to the farthest edge. And we went and found our moment of inertia, which entailed imply, applying the parallel axis theorem, right? In this case, the 80 squared term was zero because everything was symmetric about the x-axis. And then we went and found our bending stress. Hey, so I hope that helps. And uh, there'll be more videos, so make sure you check them out. But until next time, keep working hard and moving onward and upward.